Robin Martin, who also serves as the Parliamentary Assistant to the Minister of Health and a good friend to Humber River Hospital. I thank all of you for joining us today. In addition, I'm grateful that we are joined by our board chair, Mr. Michael Iacovelli, and members of our health care team, in particular our colleagues from our long-term care homes. Um, we thank them for being here. Your collective support of Humber River Hospital and the work we're doing to improve access to care in our community is both valued and appreciated. With today's announcement, we are pleased that the government is recognizing Humber River Hospital's unwavering commitment to implementing innovative solutions to the health care challenges affecting our community and our patients. Our catchment area of Northwest Toronto has a significantly higher proportion of seniors compared to Ontario as a whole. To meet the growing and evolving needs of our aging population, we must continue to work closely with government and our other health care service providers in our community to provide care that is successful and promotes dignified aging and considers the holistic well-being of every individual. Today's announcement is a testament to the innovative leadership of Humber River Hospital's care team. We are determined to apply our research and our innovations to evaluate and implement solutions that will improve seniors' care. This includes researching and evaluating ways of delivering care to our aging populations to meet their needs when and where they need it. It is our mission to ensure that our community has equitable, safe and timely care. Humber River Hospital is committed to continue to implement programs that create a better health care system for the future. So we are grateful to the Government of Ontario for your partnership as we create new ways of delivering quality patient and family-centred care to our community. With that, I now welcome the Honourable Michael Kersner, MPP for York Centre and Ontario Solicitor General to the podium. Thank you. Thank you, President and CEO Barb Collins. It's a personal great honour for me to be here with you today as the MPP for York Centre. C'est un grand honneur pour moi d'être ici avec vous aujourd'hui. And firstly, I want to acknowledge everyone that works tirelessly every day in our province to keep us safe. Je voudrais remercier chaque personne qui travaille fort pour assurer la sécurité de notre province. And I want to give a special thank you to those right here on the front lines at Hubber River Hospital. And thank you for sharing in a value that my colleagues and I hold dear each and every day, service over self. Vous êtes avant tous au service de la collectivité. And being here today with you is personal. You see, my family and I call York Centre home, and we're proud of this. We've raised our three children here. It's where they went to school, where they played in the park, where we shop, where we pray. This is our home. It is the highest honour of my life to serve the residents of York Centre as their MPP, to represent what is important to them to listen and to learn from them. And yes, we are a diverse riding, and we're proud of this. We celebrate our diversity as our greatest strength, notre diversity and notre plus grande réussite. And I believe, as I've said many times, it doesn't matter where we come from or how we got here. It matters how we weave the bonds of friendship one to another. You see, the residents of York Centre believe in our province and in our future parce que nous croyons en notre province et en notre avenir. This is our hospital, a centre of excellence, a place of innovation, a place of reimagining what our future of healthcare can look like, a place that is relentless in providing the highest quality of healthcare to all. This hospital, my hospital, is a place that I turn to for my own care, and a place that is an unassailable constant for our community. A warm welcome to all to York Centre, and I'd like to call upon Minister Calandra. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Minister Kersner, and uh, thank you, uh, Barb, and your entire team at Humber River for uh, hosting us here today. And uh, again, a special thank you to uh, our uh, colleagues in uh, in long-term care. And uh, if I can, again, just a, a really big shout out to all of the. Uh, uh, men and women in healthcare, uh, especially in our long-term care homes, who have gone above and beyond the call of duty uh, over the last number of years, both before the pandemic, during the pandemic, and will continue to do so for many years uh, to come. Uh, our government is working hard to ensure that Ontarians receive the right care in the right place, care that is convenient, care that is connected. 
We know that for long-term care residents, timely and convenient access to diagnostic services play an important role in supporting residents' health. Streamlined access to laboratory tests, blood work, x-rays, and ultrasounds mean potential illness can be spotted sooner. This means fewer stays in the hospital and less trips to the emergency room. This will not only help residents live happier and healthier lives, but will ease the pressure on our hospitals. Now, ensuring people can access the care they need when they need it is of vital importance to our government, and that's why I'm here today to announce our government is connecting long-term care residents with faster, convenient access to diagnostic services. Now, to start, the province is partnering on two pilot projects, one right here in Toronto at Humber River Regional Hospital and a second at Royal Victoria Regional Health Centre in Barrie. Expanded services will, incre will include increased access to key diagnostic services like x-rays and ultrasounds and support for long-term care residents so that they can receive these services conveniently and quickly. As a next step, we will work with our partners, including hospitals and community labs, on a broader plan to provide faster and more convenient access to care for all long-term care residents across Ontario. This will, also, this will also include looking at creative and innovative ways to connect residents with services inside their long-term care home instead of traveling to a hospital or a clinic. This is one of the many ways we're helping residents receive the care they need. Now, we've also made significant investment in specialized services for long-term care residents, including a multi-million dollar investment in long-term care through the Local Priorities Fund, creating four brand new behavioral specialized units in long-term care homes in Ajax, Penetanguishene, and in Scarborough. Having the right staff in place to deliver care is also absolutely crucial, which is why we're working to strengthen staff, staff to reach our goal of an average of four hours of direct care per resident per day by 2025. We're also building modern, safe and comfortable homes for seniors with more than 58,000 new and upgraded long-term care beds in development across the province of Ontario. We are building these homes in communities large and small because we've heard from people they want to live in the communities that they have helped build. And that includes 320 long-term care beds for a new home nearly completed right here at Humber River Hospital called Humber Meadows. This is helping us build a health, a health and long-term care system that is connected, which is faster and more convenient for all Ontarians. I will now turn it over to the Deputy Premier and Minister of Health, Mr. Jones. Well, thank you very much and good morning, everyone. My apologies for uh, my back, but it is wonderful to see so many committed partners here at Humber River Hospital. I want to thank our colleagues, Minister Kersner and Parliamentary Assistant Robin Martin for joining us today. And I want to thank our hosts, Humber River Hospital. I know Barb and her team are working and doing tremendous work, not only in ensuring patients get the best care possible, but as leaders of North America's first fully digital hospital, where they take a data-first approach to improving care within the hospital. I've had the opportunity to talk to patients across Ontario to our doctors and nurses, and to other healthcare workers. And what I have heard, loud and clear, is that the status quo is not working. Too many people are waiting too long to get an appointment or surgery, having to travel too far to get care, and spending too much time trying to navigate our healthcare system. We cannot accept this. We won't accept this. We need to be creative. We need to look at the challenges facing us today and implement innovative solutions. And today's announcement is another example of how our government is working with our partners to help connect you to care. With this initial investment into programs here at Humber River Hospital and the Royal Victoria Hospital in Barrie, long-term care residents are going to be able to get the care they need in their home. This is not only going to improve their quality of life, but it is going to save them from unnecessary trips to the emergency department. It is great news for residents. It's also great news for our hospitals, as it is one more example of how we are working to reduce the pressures on our emergency departments and the hard-working healthcare workers who staff them 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Under the leadership of Premier Ford, our government will continue to implement our bold and ambitious plan and working with our partners to make it easier 
faster, and more convenient for you to connect to care no matter where you live in the province of Ontario. Thank you again. Stay well. And with that, uh, if there are any questions, we'd be uh, delighted to, uh, to take them. Thanks. I just asked that uh, one member from each outlet line up in front of the mic here uh, and just state your name followed by your outlet and then one question and one follow-up. Hi, I'm Moira Welsh with the Toronto Star. I'd like to ask you about the new long-term care standards that were released this morning. Do you feel um, that, there, that the uh, province of Ontario, are you planning to mandate the standards in the province of Ontario? Uh, only Quebec so far requires accreditation. And a lot of um, advocates say that it's necessary to have enforcement, mandatory standards, and proper funding so to allow them to actually uphold the, the standards as, as written. Sure, yeah. So will Ontario mandate the standards in homes? Yeah, you're, you're talking about the, uh, the recent, uh, the, what, what to be released uh, federal standards. Uh, uh, look, uh, let me just say this. First and foremost, I, uh, I will take a look at them. I have, uh, in the process of reviewing them, I have no interest in watering down what Ontario is already doing. So if, if uh, the federal standards don't meet our standards, I have no uh, 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 no qualms about saying uh, uh, that we will continue to follow Ontario's high standards. Look, we, uh, we started transitioning long-term care back in 2018 with the new builds and building new modern homes, but we also went further with the Fixing Long-Term Care Act. We have nationwide, North American-wide uh, leading standards when it comes to uh, uh, our move to four hours of care uh, per resident uh, per day, the building of 58,000 new uh, uh, and uh, updated long-term care beds across the province. Uh, uh, one of the highest inspector-to-home ratio uh, in North America. So we have some of the highest standards, uh, in not only in Canada, but in North America. So say, we'll take a look at what the federal government has come up with, but I have no interest in watering down Ontario's very high standards. Uh, and I'm, 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 I'm hopeful that the federal uh, standards uh, will meet the high standards that Ontario has set. A follow-up question, please. Um, there's a strong belief that these standards actually um, raise the bar for, for the most part, especially around quality of life, freedom of activities during the day, and a, a focus on smaller homes or households within homes. So what would your timeline be to sit down, as you said, and, and look at these, to make a decision on whether you would make them mandatory in Ontario? Look, everything you mentioned is something that we're doing. As I said in my, in my remarks, we're building long-term care homes in communities across the province, large and small. We're bringing them into smaller communities because one of the things that we heard, uh, especially uh, uh, during, the, uh, uh, during the pandemic, was that people wanted to be in homes closer uh, closer to their family. It made such a difference when somebody could have their family and friends close to them. So our regulations do that. That's why, you know, I was in Athens, uh, uh, Ontario, where we're building a 128-bed uh, home, a very small community that is ecstatic, ecstatic because they're having that long-term care built right in their community. And we're doing this across the province. But add on to that, uh, as I said, a North American leading standard of four hours of care per day per resident. But we've gone even further than that. Diagnostics that we're announcing today, uh, bringing services closer to the residents of, uh, of long-term care. And we've seen what a difference the increasing in staffing has made. Uh, you know, it's not just a speaking note for us. When we turn around and we say thank you to the, the, the workers in our long-term care homes, they have gone above and beyond the call of duty over the last number of years. And they finally have a government that honors them and is willing to support them with over $5 billion worth of, uh, uh, of additional support, 27,000 additional health care workers. So look, I'm going to take a look at the, at the federal standards. I suspect Ontario will still have the highest standards in, in, uh, in Canada. Uh, I welcome the federal government to this. This is something we started, as I said, back in 2018, and the Fixing Long-Term Care Act was the next step uh, in that evolution. Thank you. Gregory Wilson with uh, Radio Canada. Uh, you were talking about your, your, your own plan. Do you believe that every nursing home should be accredited? And if so, what should be rules and uh, enforcements in place to make sure that they get accredited? Yeah, we have some of the high standards of, uh, of licensing in the, in the province of Ontario uh, already. Uh, it is something that, uh, that I'm, I'm quite proud of. And when you, uh, on top of that, uh, as I said, we have the highest inspector to home uh, ratio uh, uh, in Canada, if not, uh, if not North America. We have put in place uh, uh, 
very challenging uh, 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 new guidelines with respect to uh, the Fixing Long-Term Care Act. We're hiring 27,000 additional health care workers. We're getting to the four hours of care. We're building uh, 58,000 new and upgraded homes across the province of Ontario. We phased out those ward bedrooms, those old-style homes where you'd have three or four people in one room. But I will continue to ensure that we have the highest uh, standards when it comes to licensing in the province of Ontario. I'm very proud of, of Ontario's uh, regime for, uh, for licensing, but I said we'll take a look at what the federal uh, uh, guidelines uh, uh, or suggestions will be. My understanding at this point is they're, they're, they're not mandatory, uh, but uh, as I said, uh, I'm, I'm uninterested in any guideline that would water down the very high standards that Ontario's put in place with the Fixing Long-Term Care Act. Okay, well, I'll follow up then. If you say that uh, you want to make sure that the new guidelines do not water down uh, Ontario standards, do you believe that Bill 7 works within these standards, and if not, should it be repealed in this case? Yeah, look, Bill 7, I think, has been a, a remarkable success, a success across the province of Ontario. When we first started out on, on Bill 7 uh, back in September, uh, and, I, and a really big uh, thank you to our long-term care homes, uh, because the work that they have done in opening up ensuring that uh, beds that were unavailable prior or during the pandemic are now available has led to a really a dramatic change in how long-term care is treated uh, 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 in, in the province of Ontario for residents who are in hospital. Look, we said right from the beginning, it's the right care at the right place at the right time. I think Bill 7 has shown that, uh, that uh, those waiting for long-term care in hospital, it's not the right spot no matter and your, and your teams do great work. It's not about the work that the teams in the hospitals do. It's about the right care for the resident. And there is not one person that I've spoken to as I visited homes across this province who has said that they want to go back to a hospital after being in a long-term care home. Right place, right care, the right time, the right supports, new modern homes with 27,000 additional health care workers, the supports that we're, we're providing through the local priorities fund. It is finally, we're building that blanket of care that was started uh, uh, by Minister Elliott, the transition to Ontario health teams it includes long-term care and as I've said over and over again, we're finally in a position in the province of Ontario where long-term care can be part of, uh, of, uh, of the solution. I'm very proud of that. Thank you. Thank you. That concludes our media availability. I just ask that the speakers stay where they are. We're just going to do a group photo. Thank you, everybody.